everybody. Welcome to our weekly Pocket Network ecosystem call. I am your host, Jinx, and we're joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the Pocket ecosystem. Got some good stuff lined up today because we're going to be having a pretty broad community talk about the role of AI in the protocol and how we all basically want to be a part of it, how we can support that initiative. But first, let's run through our community updates. Uh, Grove folks, anything to, to pass out to the community at large? Fred, Gabby. And. <laughs> All right, cool. And uh, is Zach here? Jesus, there's actually a lot of faces today. I've been talking to you. Yeah. Oh, God. See, there we go. Yeah. What can I say? Any uh, Anything aside from uh, the main topic today that you want to make sure is out on community updates? No, I just want to remind people we do have our community call tomorrow and uh, time zone change just happened. So make sure you've got the right time zones for the call. It's supposed to be 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. Um, and we have a bunch of conversations uh, from ETH Denver and the offsite. But there's two big conversations we want to have. One around liquidity for markets. So Dermot's going to lead a discussion based on his forum post. Um, Get a little echo here. Who is that going? Yeah. Me? Oh, good. No. Um, and then the other conversation we want to have is around the board observers. So the DAO appointed board observer process, I believe it's kicked off. We've already got the, the vote up, but board observers are going to join tomorrow that can make it and be there for any um, questions or, or topics that people want to discuss with them uh, before they make a vote. So uh, that's tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. Join us. Jinx, you're muted. Yeah, that's the funny thing is uh, I had like in the wrong tag. I was trying to check the Google Calendar invite for the community call. And FYI, it's showing at noon my time tomorrow. Uh, just want, So as long as that's the correct time, 9 a.m. PST? Yeah, 9 a.m. Sorry, the S, I'm not sure. 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, noon Eastern is the correct Perfect. time. Okay, cool. Then and just calendar. to make it extra confusing, next week or next one, we're going to change an hour later. So that way Grove can join us. So um <laughs> I'll make sure that calendar update is correct and the server will always be correct. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Ramiro, you guys have any um, pocket scan updates? I figure as long as we've got uh, the whole community here. Nope. No new stuff for me. All right. Fantastic. Well, then let's just dive in. Uh, ads uh, is, uh, uh, real quick, Jinx, before we jump in, sorry, I missed the call to action. My Discord's being a little funky today. I think Go everybody's ahead. there. Um, I was going to throw out, uh, we're looking to launch uh, chains this week. Uh, we're still working through some of the kinks on getting the beacon chains launched, but uh, ETH beacon and Holesky beacon are coming very, very soon, uh, maybe even today. Uh, and quick follow-up to that, uh, we're looking to launch ZK Sync. Um, we've been having some issues sourcing a bootstrap node. If you have a running node of ZK Sync, please DM me. There will be some financial incentives involved. So again, if you have a running ZK Sync node, please DM me. Thank you. Damn, no, I wish I had a running uh, ZK Sync node. Okay, and Dermot is typing, so I'm gonna hang one second to make sure that uh, if we've got any relevant other things before we dive in. Yeah, I was gonna give a quick uh, protocol uh, update just so people are aware of what's happening with uh, uh, the protocol and with the coming test net. So uh, yeah. actually this week uh, we're expecting to launch uh, the private test net. Um, this uh, private test net will be uh, utilizing uh, our own kind of internal validators um, and this will allow the team to start testing a lot of the logic around uh, around claims and proofs and things of that nature. Um, we did get an initial uh, review uh, or uh, initial feedback from the uh, auditors on the uh, uh, on our SMP, and uh, they are. It was very positive. Uh, there was only some minor changes, uh, but no security issues um, in how we're we're uh, rolling up our. Um, uh, rolling up all the the chain on data 
uh, or, or the the data on chain in terms of the claims and proofs and things of that nature. So really exciting stuff. Um, but yeah, we're planning on the public or, or the private test net this week, and then uh, the live or and then the public test net we're expecting uh, to be basically in April. Uh, and this will be a we've defined it as a permissionless test net where folks can join, folks can uh, participate on basically every level and every layer of it. Um, things will likely still change as things are tested. Um, and we want to have uh, kind of like incentivize incentivization programs that are encouraging certain people to test certain aspects of the network. And so really excited about really what what this time is going to be for the ecosystem to, to have uh, a Shannon testnet to uh, really play around with. And so we're planning a lot more for this testnet than, um, than kind of what was originally expected. And all that is going to be released uh, next month um, while we use this kind of private testnet, which we're going to be working with some node runners and just some folks to uh, you know get a few different people participating in it. But uh, it won't be permissionless. Um, and then April will be the permissionless test net. So anyway, that's kind of the update of what's going on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a, that's a hell of an update. So I'm glad we got, got that in there. And the appropriate soundtrack by Harry. So appreciate the support there. Before we go any farther, does anybody else have another update they want to slide in? I'm going to go very quickly, and I, I'm still laughing at that uh, um, shout out from Harry. Um, that was excellent. Um, just just a call out to, I would love anyone's input, questions, comments. Um, I'm not going to ask for it now. We will be talking about it on tomorrow's call, uh, community call as well. Um, I'm re realizing we want to dig deeper into AI on this call, but it's a really important proposal for Pocket. I think as part of our objective to become tier one, and as soon as possible this year, um, a big part of that will be leveling up um, our liquidity across all the current exchanges we support, as well as all of the, the tier one exchanges we want to be on um, in the coming um, future as well. So we're asking for a lot of pocket at current prices. It would be around 12.5 million pocket. So I would love people to, even if they agree with the um the post itself and the need for more liquidity but they're not comfortable with the amount to start sharing ideas around what that kind of limit would be um there are clearly some trade-offs involved here in terms of timings um and what this means for our ability to get on to tier one exchanges but also to um yeah essentially onboard new investors um into pocket as well so yeah so please feel free to free last questions i'll be on the call tomorrow and actually the coin watch team who are advising us um and helping ensure that when we get the very best terms from every market maker so it really limits um the downsides as much as far as possible and I'm improving transparency for the day they'll, they'll be on the call as well to kind of provide a little bit more background about what they do and also kind of the world of market making because it's not a world that most of us spend too much time on and it's uh it's a pretty important role that is overlooked and you know clearly involves a lot of money so yeah this is a really important uh, proposal and yeah again we just love as much input as possible so I'll, I'll leave it there and hand it back to you jinx thank you you got it and i'm shooting the link out to that uh um to all of my groups as well just to make sure that everybody sees that immediately and I think that should be everything. So one more. You know, you know, oh, sorry, go ahead. One, sorry. Uh, another last minute update. I yesterday morning I put up a proposal uh, in order to increase the block size uh, and re and also increase the number of proofs required for sessions. So this is a follow up from last week's discussion and the one before that where Ben then raised the issue of block size and kind of scalability. In short, uh, what this is going to do is it's going to make space for Shannon uh, by enabling more gateways and more services uh, while we're still in the development and the migration stages. So please take a look at that as well. Beautiful. Noted. This may possibly be the most important recorded ecosystem call that everyone needs to hear in some time. It sounds like all the updates laying it together, which is awesome. Ads, I'm going to hand it over to you at this point. 
Great. Thank you, Jinx. Um, and thank you, everybody, for the input that uh, you've already left on the forum post and, and obviously everybody that's here. Um, I've put together I've put together a few slides, partly just to to make sure that we're all operating from the same definitions and also just to try to draw in some of the content from that forum post, um, because there's a lot. This is a huge topic that I know a lot of people have a lot of passion for, a lot of strong opinions on. Um, we do want to be able to to move as quickly as we can. We do want to do that in a robust way as we can. So this is focused very much on the, the pocket network point of view on things. Um, it follows the, the same kind of structure as the forum post, but in slightly different order. I thought it would be helpful. Just I, I had to educate myself on some of this over the last few months. Um, in fact, RAG was an even more recent one. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful just to flash this up so that you know, for those of us who are less familiar with some of these terms, that we'll all, we're all operating from the same understanding. Um, if any of the people who are infinitely smarter about these things and I am have any challenges to any of these definitions, please speak now. But otherwise, if we take inference as being the, the, the way of querying a model, having it run that query and return a response, the process of using an LLM, versus the training phase. And then if we take this concept of agents versus models with agents being like the interface, the kind of front end and models being like the, the back end, I guess, um, where agents can interact with real world things. So Siri is a good example, I think. Um, and then you've different types of models. So LLMs are maybe the best known today, but there's, there's lots of others. And then RAG seems to me to be um, a way that an agent, as previously defined, can reach out to a variety of different sources outside of itself um, to augment its context in order to, to do more or provide better responses. Any additions, changes, alterations, disagreements, or can I move forward? It's golden. Um, one of the questions that we asked Forum post was around, you know, what are our strengths? And there were some really good responses in that. Um, you know, there is, it feels a lot that we can draw on. Here are some of the data points on the left that I often use um, in my presentations. So the fact that we've been on a live mainnet, on our, our node ecosystem, our geographic exposure, that's been something that has been mentioned in a couple of the early exploratory conversations I've had. Um, the the fact that we have something that's proven, that's tested, that's run this, um, the scalability point around the number of blockchains. Um, then on the right, there are some of the, the more performance related things. So uptime at a protocol level. I took this from Mike. So 100% protocol uptime. I'm trying to figure out since when so that I can kind of caveat that with a in the last X period. But, um, you know, then cost gateways then is another part of our system and I guess this is the first time I would like to kind of just throw it out you know some of the things that, that come to mind are the fact that we have this gateway verse to me gives us great optionality and the ability to tap into knowledge and experience of of different entities and different groups of people um, that should be an accelerant for innovation it seems to be already doing that to some extent here so I know Grove has put a lot of thought into this I know Pocket Scan has put a lot of thought into this. I know Coda has put a lot of thought into this. I'm sure other people also. Um, so that feels like the, the gateway verse itself feels like a, a strength. Um, our operator ecosystem obviously feels like a strength. The fact that we have some track record. I guess I just want to open the mic now to anybody who who thinks that there's something that that should be on this list or that they're really excited about or that they think kind of right to win for pocket network in this space. No? Cool. Okay. Um, in which case we're going to go on to the first game of the of the session. Um, I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite strength and write it into a word cloud. Um, if it helps as you're trying to think about which one you absolutely want to focus in on, um, there are some criteria here. So is it differentiated? Is it true? Is it important? Um, and 
if you go here, uh, you will be able to type in your words. And I think this should work. So hopefully you can now see my word cloud. Um, I'd love you guys just to tell me what is the, the, the biggest strength that we have that you would like to see us build from. Can you? Zach, I, I didn't hear that. His audio went sideways, but I think the request is, can you drop a link to, to where this is at into the chat? Ah, yes, I can certainly do that. Um, uh, how do I do that without? How do I do that? Oh, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, I didn't hold on that screen for long enough, did I? Apologies, guys. There you go. There we go. That gives a direct link with the code and all that, I think. Thank you. While this exercise is going, I think I just want to uh, uh, throw in as a, a little bit of seasoning that uh, I think part of what we have to figure out is the technical execution of uh, what we can do within the network to be able to to really have a strong sense of what some of the some of our best strengths are. You know, agreed. So I'm seeing efficiency come through quite a few times. Would anybody like to unpack that for me a little bit? By efficiency as a key strength. I didn't say this, but when I'm putting Olshansky on the spot, I, I, I think when I've had some of these conversations, and I think in Denver, I think people are excited about the potential for pocket but because we don't have a working light paper yet not everyone fully gets it particularly if they're not from our community um and so i think yeah the live protocol you know actually it's really hard to get to a live working blockchain and protocol um that puts us so far ahead of everyone else um and the distributed yeah. node network but actually i think the relay mining and the efficiency piece there is actually something really interesting as we think about scale i don't know if ramiro or Olshansky want to talk to that one because i think that's actually a really cool one for the future Yeah, if I'll we, kind of jump yeah. in. So, so I think on the efficiency piece, uh, we can probably unpack that into a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. It can be efficiency in terms of price. Uh, it can be efficient when it comes to latency. Uh, it can be efficient when it comes to getting up and running. So you just mm -hmm. go to one of the gateways and get an endpoint, you know, get it at an efficient price, get it at an efficient speed. Uh, at least that's how I'm interpreting efficiency. And then that's what I was thinking when I put in efficiency. And um, so that's kind of with regard to the first question. Uh, and with regard to the second question, uh, Dermot, when you were uh, kind of conversations that we got into at East Denver, especially around relay mining, is that a lot of protocols and blockchains out there, they kind of have uh, a lot of ideas and plans and papers around how to Kind of how tokens are distributed, how the ecosystem works, um, and kind of what the goal of the token is, um, which you know it's very important, and that, that's kind of how you bring utility to whatever protocol you're building. Uh, but one of the unique things about what we're building, uh, like as a whole ecosystem, is real practical cryptographic incentives for you to be efficient, right? From a relay mining perspective, to deliver those relays to the user as fast as possible. And there's a financial incentive to do it, there, or like a tokenomic incentive to do it, a tokenomic incentive to support it. Uh, and uh, I, I think I can go on a kind of on a really long rant of all the downstream benefits that come from that. But um, I guess I'll stop there and Dermot, if you wanted me to kind of go into more details, kind of jump in. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I think it's it, it's talking. I guess it's kind of talking about the scalability piece, which is um, 
as you said, not all blockchain protocols are really, fu really fully thought through. And it may, may be only to, from my own interest, it would be interesting to compare what would be the case of, say, if you don't have ideas such as relay mining. So actually just kind of comparing it to maybe so where some of the other protocols, at least in our space, um, don't haven't quite caught up with some of this thinking yet, or maybe where they will be hindered on a scalability front. Um, this is obviously removing Web2 platforms from the equation for now because obviously they don't have those same considerations. Yeah, uh, let me just kind of riff off of that. Um, the two big things are relay mining uh, and probabilistic proofs, right? Those are the two things that really make us unique and are things that we're designing and developing as a result of the last several years of experience being in mainnet. Right, relay mining is what's gonna be able to support, you know, an uncapped number of relays. Uh, for years, Mike has been saying trillions, and uh, with relay mining, it's actually gonna be possible uh, once it shifts. Uh, and then probabilistic proofs is what's gonna be able to support uh, this long tail of kind of small niche games, uh, because uh, we have to support both billions of relays on the major chain but also be able to scale to support new use cases, new services, and other things. So it's the combination of both of those uh, that, you know, really no one else is thinking about. And we are only thinking about it due to the on-hand experience we have uh, as an ecosystem over several years. I'll end it there. Thank you, Ajansky. Actually, that segues very nicely into the next kind of section where I would love to just kind of turn the mic over to to you and to some of the other people that that shared their thoughts in the forum and also anybody who maybe has thoughts that they didn't share um, and ask you to to tell us briefly um, what you think the the opportunity is, like what problem could we solve and why are we well placed to solve it? And obviously, if you've already covered some of the the why, you know, no need to no need to feel like you have to say it again. But would love to just kind of hear from you. I think first, if if you're open to it, and where you see the opportunity for pocket network and AI. Uh, for sure, uh, I'll take it off, and then I'll uh, also hand it over to some of the other people on the call uh, to get everyone's uh, ideas on board. But I feel like let's uh, let's use the emojis. Um, how many people here have kind of in, okay, not yet, not yet, it's too, it's too soon, guys. Uh, how many people here have interacted with an LLM of any sort, whether it's Chad GPT or other? Kind of throw out an emoji. All right. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot. Uh, yeah. Now, okay, now how many people here have built an LLM enabled application? Let's see how that number, you see I'm seeing a check mark. Okay, so I'm seeing a few emojis, but I'm seeing less. Uh, and, that, and that's totally normal, right? That's, there's the application and then there's the developers uh, who build those applications. And myself, when I was building an NLM enabled application, kind of like GPOC, for example, or others, or others, I really needed a cheap and simple endpoint to do LLM inference. And I started with OpenAI, uh, and then I kind of played around with Claude, and then I tried to uh, cut down the cost uh, in order to uh, make inference cheaper. And that's where I started going, looking at open source models. And then I realized that it's, uh, it's a non-trivial amount of effort to really operate those open source models. Uh, and then, but we have this whole network of very experienced and proficient and uh, reliable operators on the network uh, that run open source blockchains, for example. And kind of, so to me, when I think about the opportunity here, it's there's this very vast network of open source models and we have a vast network of operators and being able to just access that, you know, in an efficient cost-effective way with a lot of optionality to try and play around with different models is exactly what I would have needed as an LLM developer when I was building my app. 
And I can tell you that from the conversations I have with different people at conferences or events, uh, this is a very common ask. And it's why you have all these kind of web to AI companies spinning up and running open source models themselves to expose those endpoints, right? So like Together AI, AnyScale, uh, Octo AI, they literally just take open source models and expose endpoints to developers who need them um, at a certain cost. And, you know, I, en I ended up using those companies because that's exactly what I needed and that's what I was paying for. And the moment you start, you know, put your credit card on the line and, uh, or some other form of payment and you start paying for something, that's when you really know there's an opportunity. Uh, at least that's how I think about it. Uh, and, and I very much think that we're not only set up to do this, but it fits really, really, really well with everything we've been developing over the last few years. So all the quality of service that gateways are building, right? And what we're doing at Grove. Uh, and the relay mining and probabilistic proofs to support uh, an extensive network of fine-tuned models. Um, I think it can really open up a lot of doors. Uh, and um, I can, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll just stop there for now. But I think we are uh, set up, we're in a very unique position. And we have an extremely, you know, almost like once in a generational opportunity to hone in and own this, uh, uh, own and drive this entire uh, market. Thank you, Ashansky. Um, I've just flashed up a, a different slide that I was, I've been trying to figure out the different responses and trying to visualize them. Um, so from what I understand of the use case around AI inference, um, in the same way that an operator hosts a blockchain node, they could host an open model um, they could then provide access so that we can run inference to that model um, in a very similar way to the way we do with blockchain data. Um, from what I understand, like, that could be a network of lots of different types of models. And then I guess the the gateway would probably indicate which one was to, you know, which que query was to be sent to which one that, that would be done outside of the protocol, I imagine, right? How does that bit of it work? Uh, that's a good question, and it's a very nuanced question because this is where things really uh, get into the weeds, uh, okay. and where I think uh, I think there's going to be different approaches and different opinions as to how it should be done. So I'm kind of going to defer like the technicals of yeah. exactly how it would work to you know a written format, but at okay. a high level, um, at a high level, yeah, there will be a big network. Uh, of operators running different open source models. And obviously the gateways are going to be um, redirecting those LLM inference requests to the respective operators, depending on the model, depending on the need, uh, depending on the prompt. There's different, different, there's a lot of different ways to go about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but fundamentally, what it does is leverage pocket decentralization uh, and efficiency to get an LLM developer, an AI developer, efficient, cheap, performance inference on the spot. Perfect. So okay. one, 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 one thing I wanted to add to that is that that's really the uh, adds with what you were talking about of uh, what gateways will do. That's very much mm -hmm. the strength of Pocket because the infrastructure, uh, the protocol itself is taking care of the heavy infrastructure that someone that's that's uh you know skilled in uh uh or understanding of ai and and user experiences uh they don't have to run the the heavy infrastructure they get access to all the heavy infrastructure and then gateways can come up with uh you know all new types of user experiences there's going to be gateways that probably uh will have multiple LLMs all in, uh, you know, kind of one user experience and people can send it and it'll route it to the LLM that's rated the best for that model uh, or uh, rated the best uh, for that type of query. And then there will be other ones where, you know, users can come and potentially pick a specific model and test very specific things on that specific model. And so the thing is, is because of Pocket's gateway strategy, uh, there's going to be people that are incentivized to create user experiences that draw in new customers for themselves. 
And they can do that without the heavy burden of the infrastructure in the background because that's abstracted away through the pocket protocol. So uh, that with what you were asking, that's very much where we're going to see a lot of innovation because gateways kind of act as an L2. And I've already made that kind of thought before uh, about thinking about gateways, but but they're an L2 that's focused on the experience, uh, customer experiences, while pocket and the protocol abstract away all the heavy lifting of needing to run uh, all this infrastructure just to have this kind of user experience um, that can attract new users. Perfect. Thank you, Shane. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you, Ashansky, for that response. Um, if I could jump, no. if I could jump in there as well. Yeah, please. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, just to yeah. just to tack on to Olshansky's comment on on kind of the generational opportunity here. Um, I mean, I kind of view this as kind of the next computing revolution, and we've reached a tipping point. You know, from like ninety five to two thousand three, um, we saw the internet just absolutely explode. Um, from about two thousand seven to twenty fourteen, we saw mobile absolutely explode, and it definitely uh, feels like we've reached a tipping point on um, AI with with the release of of GPT, um, at least some of the more recent versions. And it's just increasingly clear that uh, we are each going to have our own individual agents at a, at, a, at, a, at a device level. And I think the bulk of the traffic and usage will be um, completely, uh, will be very much on the infant side of things. Um, if anyone saw the uh, uh, reports from, from NVIDIA, um, uh, from, from public public reporting, uh, forty percent of their revenue in twenty twenty three from their data centers was was inference. I'd venture to guess that you know two three four years ago that was uh, under ten percent, right? Um, and that's just an incredible it's it's just an incredible proxy for understanding where things are headed at this point. And like everyone has said here, we are just in such a perfect position to be able to capitalize on this and actually create um, real value for real people. Um, I think at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the, the name of the game for most inference use cases will be speed and cost. And we've proven that on the blockchain side. And I just don't think there's anything stopping us from proving this on the LLM inference side, or even really any open source protocol, but particularly given the timing of everything on, on, on the inference side. Um, so I just, I just think, as Shane was saying, given our gateway strategy, you know, Grove will have its own opinion on how to approach things. Um, I fully expect there to be many, many other types of gateways that have their own opinions on how they want to serve this kind of traffic. And I just think that's going to lead to um, such a incredible, diverse uh, uh, set of solutions all settling on on pocket network. Um, and even more like philosophically high level, if we're all going to have our own um, agents uh, on, on our devices, uh, 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 we really want people to be able to credibly use open source models. Um, I don't want to see a world where all our devices have, you know, Meta's AI or Google's AI, uh, definitely not Google's AI. Um, I really want to see a world where, uh, you know, we kind of uh, uh, choose our own biases, if you will, with the models that make the most sense for us. And I think that'll just be better uh, for this crazy and weird future that we're inevitably uh, uh, hurdling towards right now. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, so I, I think um, you certainly paint a very exciting vision, and I think um, you'll you'll probably be preaching to the choir. Um, but it's great to get that context as to where where you see the excitement and how you think it transfers across, especially since you were obviously fairly fairly critical to the the original pocket. Um, as we kind of look at this new era. Now, inference was one of the things that was mentioned in the forum post. Um, I, I think it was the core to Ramiro, your response. Um, is there anything else that you would want to highlight, Ramiro, that hasn't been mentioned to date? Um, or are you happy that it's been covered? Uh, I think that most of it has been covered by Olshansky. Uh, our main opportunity is to sell shovels today. <laughs> it's, we, we can mm -hmm. run... All the, do all the heavy lifting of running inference and let the customers come. As Solchansky said, when you are developing these applications like a RAG, for example, you will need an endpoint for 
from an LLM and you will end up going and put your credit card on OpenAI or some other service. The same goes for the, oh, oh I forgot the name for the, <laughs> I, I, it's encoders, but it's not encoders, but the other part that you need to, to do the, the graph search on the data. So it's also another model that we could be hosting. So you, what we can do is what we know how to do. We can deploy some infrastructure. This mm -hmm. infrastructure in this case will be for machine learning. And we only have to set up some world rails and let the node runners do what they do. And we know that they can do it great. And we will start selling AI RPCs for everyone. And it's a real use case. I have not seen to the date any other protocol that's focusing on what we are doing here. I think that there, when people talk about machine learning and AI, it all becomes uh, really complex. So anything can be AI. And there are many protocols that are actually running much smaller models that are of no interest to us and they won't have any overlap with us. And, and it won't, they, they are not offering a solution to most of the AI developers out there. So I think that we are unique and we, we and our product, despite of being simple, it's a real need. I think simple is wonderful. Um, thank you for that, Ramiro. Uh, just in case anybody is not seeing the chat. So there's been some chat around uh, how intense the competition is. So with Weep3 Capital mentioning that there are there are decentralized AI protocols and platforms popping up and the need to move fast. And then um, Shane kind of bringing back the need, you know, potentially that they're not, they're not, they, they certainly don't have it all figured out yet. And as Ashansky and Mike, I think, painted a picture very well, like there are a lot of things that we have learned in the three years that we've been running on a live mainnet um, that will be very valuable as we move into this. So kind of doing it right quickly, I think, is the brief that I've taken from that. Um, I don't know if Steve is on the call um, and just pseudonymous. Steve, are you here? Okay, I guess he, he maybe didn't didn't make it. I have attempted to create a diagram highlighting what I understand about the retrieval augmented generation, which to me feels a little bit more complex um, just because you've got pocket network acting as a what a vector database, which from what I understand is you have repositories of information that are given some kind of a an identifier that we then effectively do. I think in the previous conversation, we were talking about that being a, a gateway role, which kind of makes sense to me in our current ecosystem, but where we, we would then route people to the right resources. And it might be a database that's not an AI database. It might be a model. It might be a, another agent. There's a, a greater variety, I think, of, of sources you can draw on. And instead of your customer, if you will, being an application, it's it's more explicitly an agent. Now, again, I'd like to throw that out to anybody who better understands the space to, to improve that definition um, or to, to share. I know Steve had, had um, a strong point of view about the opportunity here um, to share any thoughts you have on ease of access, size of opportunity, how it fits with our current product. If it's all right, I'd like to jump in here. Please. So yeah, with with regards to uh, like rag and stuff, obviously, like it's going to be pretty difficult. Obviously, traditionally, you do something like line chain to augment and add your own vectors to a model or something, but we can't really do that in the in in this sort of space. But there are other projects out there um, that we could very easily partner with. That this is their entire thing. And all they need is nodes, uh, inference nodes um, to uh, to be run. And as a gateway, you could provide um, the ability to have your users upload like private or public vectors, and um, and be able to do this sort of um, augmented generation 
uh, very simply. And seeing as we have such a large number of node runners, for example, I run a node myself on my laptop uh, for, for this uh, specific one I'm thinking of. Um, and I know that my laptop is far weaker than any of the machines that our node runners are, are using. So um, I think this kind of thing is very, very, very possible for Poct, and it's probably easier than um, some would imagine. As long as we can get in contact and partnership with the correct people, um, augmented generation is, is going to be a... Uh, uh, probably one of the first things we could do. And just as I a quick out, throw in uh, I, behind uh, Harry there, uh, this also really makes it clear that we're looking at a lot of new entity types or levels of participation within the protocol based on what ancillary services or, or systems are being supported, uh, which is why that last proposal that passed is so important to be able to appropriately incentivize these different entity types. Yeah, I'll also jump in here because when people say RAG, it sounds like a scary kind of complex term. Uh, realistically, so when we shipped GPOC a year ago, uh, that is a RAG application that uh, still uses the state-of-the-art RAG technology, right? It reads, it retrieves pocket documentation. It augments the documentation for the LLM and then it generates a response. So kind of what my wish for GPOC as like one of the first applications is to get answers to pocket documentation using the pocket network as the instance layer, right? And I expect things to get really, really complex around where is the data and other things, but uh, I kind of wanna, you know, there's so much we can do before we overcomplicate it uh, and go down the next 10 years of things that we can build and fundamentally just having that inference endpoint to do the generation uh, will already set, uh, like if we have this in production, when we have this in production, will put us ahead of the entire industry when it comes to decentralized AI. Yeah. I just want to jump in and, and double on what Olshansky said. I think that we can complicate this a lot and we don't have to, to be the, the first ones to be doing this live. And, and I think that should be our main focus today. Yeah, I totally agree uh, on that. Uh, we don't know what is right. I don't think customers know what is right. People need to figure it out. And it can only happen if we can get feedback from customers. And that can only happen if they start uh, you know, having something, using it. And you know, they have their own customers and we, we communicate with them. Oh, sorry, I just realized that I'm on mute. <laughs> sorry. Um, can you hear me? We can. Helps not to be on mute, eh? Um, I was agreeing um, in that I, I, I don't think we're going to have all the answers or, and I don't think, you know, I, I hear the desire to get out and get testing. Um, the only thing I would say is if you are going out to pitch customers with a, we can do everything, um, you will find that you're not used for anything. And the more you can go out with a, here is an example that is grounded, that you know we can tie back to what we already have and our reasons to believe, you know, this is why we're a strong option for this, the more likely we are to be able to bring in some really great partners that could help accelerate us in this space. Um, so do, you know, I... 
I guess this these these conversations, while they may feel like we're just kind of having hypothetical discussions, and I get the the feeling that everybody wants to kind of be building, they're really helpful for me um, as I think about how I would pitch this and who I would pitch this to and how I would persuade them. Um, thank you, Shane. Um, so just um, coming back to RAG, coming back to inference, um, can I ask Shansky, Mike, Ramiro, anybody who, Harry, anybody who is kind of on the technical side of things, like, is one of those, is, is, it, is, is it quickest to just get, you know, to start running inference to some models and kind of effectively start with inference and maybe move into RAG? Because that, or am I misinterpreting that? And actually, RAG is is very quick and easy to do, and and maybe multi model inference is harder. What are your views on difficulty? I I can jump in first. I know that Oshans here and Romero are probably going to have a different take to me, but I really think that RAG is going to be the first thing that we could do. Um, I, uh, I know that there's specifically a, a, a protocol I've got in mind that I would really love for us to partner with. They already have inference nodes that need to be run. Um, and then the gateways that we have on the network could run a different type of node, what they call community servers, which are basically the augmentation part. Um, and it allows you to have like a Google Google-like experience uh, sort of like a decentralized perplexity AI and different gateways could offer different vectors. Um, I, I, I really think RAG is going to be our, our like bread and bar. Um, but uh, I, uh, I think maybe someone else will have a different view. But um, personally, that's my take. Uh, for me, RAG is like a combination of two things. It's going to an LLM and then having a, a vector database to query. So we could be uh, hosting all the parts that a RAG needs, but not be the RAG itself, unless there is something else on top of, on top of us, like I think High 10 law said, <laughs> in another protocol using us for a RAG-like application will be most possible for Pocket, in my opinion. Any more for yeah. any more on that one? I think personally, I think talking about RAG in the context of the protocol overcomplicates things. Uh, like we could talk about applications, but it's also kind of like when you talk about AWS or GCP or bare metal, you don't think, you don't talk about social networks, right? A social network is an application and a cloud is an infrastructure provider providing services. Now, you know, for example, a, a centralized guy could come out with a one-click social network deployment on top of it, right? That is something like what a gateway could offer. Uh, but when we think about what we do kind of as a next step uh, at the protocol layer, it's very much just LLM inference, right? And the team at Coder is kind of, I think they have a proposal with a lot of really good ideas. So that's, I think that's important context and a, an important way to think about it. And then just think, what applications do we build on top of it? RAG is one of thousands uh, that will potentially be built in the future. Thank you. I think that's a, a very helpful framing, certainly for me. Um, I have one other question area um, that didn't come up in the forum post, and it, it may it may be I take this with a massive pinch of salt. But one of the things that I've been reading about was um, a Web3 inference use case where you're connecting the AI agent or model with blockchain data or, or whatever it needs in order to connect to things like crypto payments or decentralized IDs. Is that just too far out? Like, is that in, too far in the future? Am I maybe just misunderstanding or are we seeing that as a sub-segment of the first slide? Um, is that something anybody has a view on? Absolutely. This is like the, the, the first possible use case you could do. Think about like the simplest chatbot 
with like a Llama 2 uh, model as its like base, uh, taking microtransactions in like USDT for every piece of influence that you do. Um, I could see that as probably one of the first like consumer facing apps that is built using entirely POCT for both the like uh, uh, microtransaction RPC and also the uh, Llama 2 or whatever model uh, inference um, to be built. Something like this could be completely like serverless as well. So like when I say serverless, I mean it could be like a, uh, just like pretty like cheap for the developer to make and run and all they would need is just a, a pocked endpoint. Uh, from one of the from one of the gateways, and they could have uh, the best of both worlds. Uh, I can really see that as like one of the first uh, like non crypto use cases. I think that the only way for uh, LLMs to like succeed on Pocked is for them to be not crypto focused, but being able to tie into crypto for like microtransactions is going to be the um, uh, going to be the real killer. Uh, first app in my opinion i'm so glad that you mentioned llama 2 because that's specifically what i was thinking of like the community itself dog fooding since that's a well-established distributed network llm there are a ton of good examples like reddit has a great llama 2 community that has a big llama 2 instance running um they're like i think that's very much a way that we can just jump right in and start supporting these efforts by having node runners themselves participating in a lot of two group uh, that's i would push for that any other thoughts i'm conscious that we're running out of time and i did want to get to the next step section um i did i did pull in ashansky's thoughts on on what we'd need to do, like what are the things that need to to happen in order to deliver on them? Um, so some some small things, I th I think. Uh, Ashansky, tell me if I'm wrong. That hopefully wouldn't distract you from shipping Shannon. Um, and then a lot of it feels like it's on the gateways, the operators, and being able to kind of bring in early adopters, partners, kind of between us as a as a project and working with our gateways to kind of secure that. Did anybody have anything that they had on these are things that we we'd need before we get into next steps? Yeah, first I wasn't expecting to have my uh, answer up here, but thanks for sharing it, Ted. Uh, I I just wanted to also call out uh, the post that uh, the coder team put together on the forum. On the forum, uh, there's some details there. Um, right, they were the ones who also put up the RTTM proposal, so uh, which is kind of the foundation to enable everything. Um, but I that is kind of in addition to the points you just added, and I just I wanted to shout that out. Yes, thank you for for pointing that out. I was actually going to drop it as an additional comment onto the forum post this morning. Um, just a link back to to Coda's proposal. Coda, I I know you're here and we've heard from you already is there anything else that you think um you know we need to to figure out um you know where do you see the biggest challenges if we want to make this a reality how do we get moving a few thoughts one of them is these community calls are great interactive and everything but uh we need to be able to discuss on the forum as well uh, all the comments uh questions concerns everything is welcome we need to do a little bit more asynchronous communication because these calls are only once in a week. Not everyone joins, and not everyone is maybe you know uh, eager to speak in front of the you know larger group here. Uh, we welcome every yeah. thought, so we need to do more between these community calls uh, every week. So that's one, and the other thing is. As I said, we don't know what is right. We need to experiment. Uh, we need to launch a few chains. One of them could be as simple as uh, some, you know, maybe diffusion, some LLMs. And I know there's so many uses for LLMs, so many uses for uh, stable diffusion image generators. And, you know, someone mentioned, you know, we need to provide those shallows. All types of shallows are out there, and they all have uses. Uh, with that, we will enable Grow, Nodis, uh, 
talking to their customers now we have proof of concepts the node runners are geared to uh, run the nodes we learn even how to run these things these are different beasts so i i would say let's start simple let's start with you know multi-purpose known well understood things and let's apply them to the pockets and then we will uh, get to more complex you know anything complex starts with simple let's start with simple um, you know as quickly as possible and I don't want to be the first person saying that, but we're in the middle of the bull cycle. It's not going to last forever. You know, I wish it would, but probably it won't. Uh, timing kind of matters here. Uh, you know? <laughs> so these are my comments. Thank you very much for asking me. Completely agreed. And um, I hear you. Uh, I think it is important that we move quickly. I think it is important that we continue the work asynchronously. I would love you to engage with the the thread that that kind of I shared just to capture some of those points, even if it's only to link back to your own proposal, um, because there were some great points raised there as well. And I obviously will will come back into your post. As, um, I don't feel like I've got a high qualification to comment on it, but I will, um, as I learn more, I will definitely be more engaged with that. Um, there's some active conversation going on in the thread about expertise. Uh, my two cents, I, for what it's worth, Gabby, I completely agree with you. Um, I think, in fact, I completely agree with everyone in that I don't, I, I, I don't want to undervalue what we bring to this, but I think what we bring to this is the knowledge of running a live protocol, the supply network that we've established, the knowledge that Ashansky and, and the rest of the team have built into Shannon. Um, the ecosystem that we have, this gateway strategy that I know Dermot and some of the other people on this call were championing. You know, I think we don't have to come to it and say we know everything about AI because that's that's not our right to be in this conversation. And we have a right to be in without having to do that. So I I don't know if that agrees with people, but that's that's they're my thoughts. The next steps, um, just to quickly, and maybe we do this async because I have gone over, apologies. Um, but it's been such a useful conversation, certainly for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, it it sounds, you know, is, is it useful to just do a quick recap, do you think, Jinx, on what we have to do now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would love to... <laughs> one more song thanks harry um you know it sounds like there is some work that we need to do in terms of on the on the kind of proposition framing going out to potential demand side seeing you know what we can you know what we can pull together on that front um there are definitely some questions i feel like we we still need to answer and figure out during those conversations but if we frame the proposition around inference and we draw on the the right to win so securing that demand side and then setting up some experiments do we have operators i, I know grove you've you've already been talking to some of the network about hosting some of these models do we have the <laughs> ecosystem side ready to roll do we already have um yeah, do we have people ready to to run these experiments on our within our ecosystem yes i mean uh, uh, we are Do you get the sense that there are others alongside you, Jinx? Is this something that feels like it's going to be easy or something that feels like it's going to be uncertain? I don't think it's going to be difficult. Like, I mean, it's Harry's already talking with with I think some some strong knowledge and and some some expertise and at least some experience in the space has uh, uh, protocols in mind for RAG application. I mean, I think that's a strong start. I see Steven here, he's got a ton of experience uh, uh, in the past of working with AI stuff and uh, you know potentially could help add a little expertise uh, depending on how much time and energy he's got for that. Uh, I know with our R&D boxes at uh, Quantum Spider, we are happy to jump in and I would be shocked if both Pocket Scan and Coder weren't in a similar position. Awesome, and thank yeah. you for giving a shout out to Steve because I don't think you were here before, but we we did um, we did use your name in vain earlier, and it's great to see you here. Thank you. I'll just add a couple more notes. I'll just add... sorry. Go ahead, Steve. I I literally just uh, said Ashansky. No, <laughs> so no, no I was just gonna say I was just gonna say I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy to be here. I I'm sorry I missed my name in vain. 
Yeah. Um, just want to say, like, we're also thinking about this very heavily within growth in terms of, uh, you know, our go-to-market and what we can do to support driving this. Uh, so, you know, weather updates will stir them. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanted to double down on what Coder said that, you know, these calls are great to kind of to do to knowledge share and share, get everybody's ideas. But the forum, you know, if you're a node runner uh, and you have a GPU and you want to support uh, instance on the network, kind of, you know, I think the forum, the, that post is a great way to start aggregating that information. Or if you're also, uh, you have an application, you need inference endpoints, kind of throw it there so that we can balance out the discussions that we have on these calls with async uh, communication to really, really drive this forward. And I will echo again, please, 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 if you're hearing this uh, recording after the fact as well, jump into those threads on the forum. It's super important to get community coordination around this and to get everyone's input so that we're all on the same page with how we're moving forward as a protocol. Uh, please, please, forum. Can, can I ask a question, uh, just an opinion, like on the, the, the inference side? I mean, my, my, uh, my, my, my personal opinion at this point is that um, like the pocket network is not equipped to do the like the, the the kind of GPU processing that would make it super valuable at 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 scale, and maybe I'm wrong and have not been paying attention, but like have run lots of nodes in the past, and the the the, the infrastructure to run those nodes is very very different uh, than like what would be required to to do like heavy duty inference at scale. Um, I'm really interested in other thoughts. I think you'll see some of that is already uh, when when you roll back through and look at the presentation or or listen to the recording from the beginning, some of that was already answered. And one of the things I talked about was we are really going to have for the first time some very clearly different tier uh, entity types within the protocol. Um, the vast majority of participating nodes are probably not going to have anything to do with GPU calc at all and are purely going to be communications like gRPC or uh, providing node support for the RAG services that Harry was talking about, things along that line where we're just like, you know, uh, on our core uh, service of, of providing RPC communication. Um, but then you know, there are chances for nodes to be also a member of a, an LLM swarm like a, a Llama 2 instance. And then there are other folks who may want to more actively participate in a distributed GPU protocol. Um, and that would be just like them running both an ETH node and a pocket node. The requirements for their participation in the GPU protocol would be separate from um, the, the pocket requirements themselves. I think that would be handled almost entirely by the protocol that they're choosing to participate in. If I recall correctly, actually, you could run like a Mistral 7B instruct uh, inference node on like a, just a regular laptop. So it really depends on uh, it really depends on what kind of LLM uh, models that we're, we're yeah. aiming to support. Um, what kind of requirements the node runners are going to need. Yeah, so we're not talking about like distributed compute, right? You're talking about more like gateway yeah. to uh, like uh, endpoints that would be fulfilling these requests? Yes, very much so. Got it. If I may, um, I yeah, think the LLMs are the perfect fit for the nature of pocket really because nature of pocket was it's going to be totally decentralized right but the reality today is larger node runners are doing most of the work and people at their homes they cannot really do this easily right running even ethereum server 724 always being up to speed with the chain it is not an easy thing to do but a lot of people are gamers a lot of people have gpus in their homes and, you know, if they run pocket nodes for, I don't know, 12 hours a day, maybe during the nights and serve these uh, GPU heavy computes uh, when their machines are not being used, I believe that's the true character, true nature, true, true uh, potential of pocket network. So I think yeah. LMs are actually really well fit uh, for what pocket does. 
and Fred asked an important question earlier in the chat, and it's almost become kind of a meme, but what is QoS, right? Um, you know, we don't necessarily have to be an Akash. Akash already does that. We don't have to be a distributed uh, a compute network in any meaningful way. Um, but there, there are a number of things that we can do aside from just straight communications, which is also, you know, running instances in an LLM uh, on the nodes themselves. And as this progresses, you're going to see a lot of lighter and lighter LLM nodes. That's just the nature of, of ongoing development, right? Uh, you're going to start having LLM nodes that can be run on a mobile device. Somebody's going to put that out there. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for pocket node runners to be also part of core LLM networks. Yeah, I, I like all of those ideas. I think there's there, there's so many different possibilities to, to like uh, align for AI, uh, but being clear on where that alignment is, I also think is important because for the AI community to understand where the fit is, that'll need to be uh, really, really clear. And if um, you, you say LLMs and for example, like don't distinguish between like you can train models versus you can just like serve up endpoints uh, you, you know, I think that makes the message harder to like connect. Yeah, I mean, and that's obviously that's why a big call here focused on narrative and and helping ads and some of the other drivers of narrative get their head around how to effectively communicate that. And and your input on that as someone with the amount of experience you have is is great in in trying to help that reach the marketplace at large. So just to wrap up, because um, I have taken way too much of your time, but I do very much appreciate it. I will write up some notes from this call. Um, the recording will be shared. Um, once I've written up those notes, I will add them into that forum post. Uh, I might first check them with some of you to see if we can enrich them by working together, um, or I can just add it and you can add your additions there. And then hopefully together we can kind of crunch through that and and kind of create something that we're really confident kind of taking out to people and and testing and see where we can you know where we can unlock the demand um where we can start to put together some of these experiments and kind of all work together to, to explore robustly at pace so um thank you everyone Beautiful. Big, long call today. So uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube or whatever, strap in and get to the end. Uh, thank you, everyone, for participating and for staying long. There's a lot of uh, a lot of expertise in this group, whether or not it's specifically AI expertise. And I think this call is a good demonstration of how actively we need all of you in helping to shape this future of the protocol. So appreciate your time and commitment to that. And we will see you again next time, next week, same channel. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks all.